and I'm going to share the screen just like yesterday for the for the Chrome browser. OK, so for today's session, uh, I believe it's going to be easier because a lot of the things that we covered yesterday, it's applicable to today's session as well. Uh, because uh, today we said that we're going to cover uh, how to create short answers in Blackboard. Uh, so it's uh, similar. You have uh, you can create it in the pool or you can create it as a test. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to show you how to do uh, do both. Uh, or we can we can go through the pool uh, creation quickly. Then we go go to the actual test creation. Uh, also regarding the deployment, it's going to be similar to what the, to the instructions or uh, uh, that we covered la last uh, yesterday uh, for deployment of, of of the test. The same the same options that we did yesterday. The deployment op options for the MCQs are applicable to short answers as well. Okay. So again, I'm going to use my parasitology course as an example again uh, for the. And the, today again, the, perp the purpose of today's session is to create uh, short answer exams. So again, I'm going to go to test surveys and polls. Uh, again, why we are covering uh, short answers because this is the two types of types of exam that the college are mainly uh, interested in. Uh, and we prepared our uh, configurations or uh, for, for the for the assessment uh, utilizing whether uh, MCQs or uh, short answers uh, and the short answers by the way can be utilized for uh, for the OSP examination can be utilized for clinical scenarios or cases uh, and as well ca it can be just uh, basically a short answer question exam. Uh, so you can use it however you want uh, uh, in the final examinations. Uh, I believe for continuous assessment, most of us were already done from uh, doing continuous assessment, but as part of the final examination, some people are doing cases, some people are doing OSPs, some people are doing just short, short answer, uh, short, short answer questions, exams. All of this can be utilized using the same test that I'm going to explain to you. So regarding uh, the polls, it's going to be the same thing as yesterday, as I mentioned. If you have a pool of questions and you want to create uh, those questions uh, in the pool, OK, for different lectures, for example, uh, I recommend again creating the, those kind of questions in the pool. OK, so for me, again, as I mentioned, uh, these were for MCQ examination, but you can do the same thing for short answer examination. If you want to create a poll, poll you're going to build a poll. OK, and give it a name. So I'm going to call this, for example, poll one. But the difference here, instead of adding MCQ questions, I'm going to start adding a uh, short answer question. And uh, please distinguish here between essay and short answer. If I click on essay, the essay option is going to give you, this is going to be the question te text. So you're going to add your question here. As I mentioned yesterday, if you copy and paste text from Word document or from the Internet or from any other source, uh, please make sure to use this icon, which is remove formatting icon. Basically, the benefit of this is to remove any kind of like uh, text formatting, the type of the text and the size of the text. If the text is was italicized or bolded or anything, it's going to remove or, or the, and if the part of the text is highlighted. This icon here, remove formatting, is going to remove this uh, formatting for you. OK, so this is uh, in the question text. In the answer, the difference between a say is that in the answer here, as you can see, uh, there is no uh, options uh, except that the student, he can write as much as he want into in this box. But this is not we, what we are interested in. What we are interested in is about creating question using short answer. Why we are inter interested in short answer? Because this is the, the recommendation of the college to utilize short answers uh, in the final exams. Again, whether for OSP, for, uh, for clinical scenarios and cases, and also for short uh, answer questions. 
Uh, what's the benefit here from the name of the, te of the test? It's a short answer question test. So the answer is going to be here limited. Uh, unlike the essay type of the uh, of, of, of questions where the, the the entry into this box is going to be unlimited, here you can set the number of rows that uh, that's going to be displayed in the answer field for the student. OK, so. Uh, if I want to set for example, the rows to um, by default, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, adjusted to three by default settings. You can add more rows or you can decrease the rows. I think the recommendations of the college for short answers is to use maximum three rows rows for answers for the students. So this is again the difference between short answers uh, and between the essay type questions. So here again, you're going to write your text. Uh, again, if you're copying and pasting uh, a question, if you're writing the question directly in here, it's it's OK. But if you're copying a text from any file or from the Internet and placing this text in here, again, just remove the formatting. So if I wrote anything. Uh, if I copy it and, uh, from the Internet or from any other source, I just can click Control A for select all. So I'm now selecting the whole text and that's in here and I'm going to click on remove formatting. OK. I can show you an example for that. So if, we, if I click test. In the internet. I just want to try to copy any text from here. For example, any text. If I copy this text and paste it in here, as you can see, now the text is copied and pasted as it is using the source uh, formatting. OK, if I want to remove this formatting from the text, I just basically uh, click Control and A for selecting all the text that's in this box and then just click remove formatting. Okay. Actually, it did, it, it did remove the formatting from this text here, but for this one, it's still bolded. But usually, when especially if you copy it and paste it from uh, from Word document, what happens with me when I copy and paste my quizzes before, it actually removed all the, the text formatting. OK. This is an image, but of, of course, for images, it's not recommended that you copy and paste. The recommendation from Edutech for images is that you insert the image uh, into the file. Uh, and I'm going to show you here for people who are planning to utilize a short answer questions for uh, for OSPI examination. Uh, you can insert an image here from using this option. Some people have uh, faced a problem in which uh, the image uh, appeared for some students, but not for others. Uh, and in this case, in this case, the recommendation of Edutech basically is to uh, to set the size of the image uh, in 400, 400 by 300 pixels. OK, so and the way to do this, for example, if I want to insert an image, I can browse my computer. I can insert this image here. And from the appearance, I can set the pixel size here. So this image actually is within the recommendation, so I don't have to do anything. But if you want to change it, uh, if you have bigger size images and you want to change it to the recommended recommended size, you can set the size 400 by 300. And click insert. It's a it's, the recommendation here is to give it some description so I can go to the general and give it just. Any description. And that's now the inserted image. By the way, this text, these 
text boxes. It can be, uh, you can uh, maximize or you can change the size of them to facilitate your entry for the questions, basically by just clicking on this part. So it says resize text editor. And now I can make this box bigger when I enter the question to make it easier for me when I enter the question. Okay, so here now this is the, the image that I put in the, into this uh, uh, question and I can write the question that I want either, either below or above this image. OK, so I can write. I can insert my text here. I can write my question with the OSP, with the with the, with this image. And then in here, I can say again how many lines I'm going to uh, how, how many rows uh, of, uh, of text I'm going to allow the student to to use for this question. And you're just going to click submit. OK, so now I have created the question. You, you can also, by the way, visualize how the question looks like quickly if you have multiple questions by pressing on this uh, square, small square. If I press on this square, it's going to show me the question. And by the way, when you also enter the text, again, I can edit the question here. When you enter a question, uh, of course, it's recommended that, that you enter also the answer key in here. So that the, the, the point of having this box here, which is the answer, is to enter your answer key for the short answer examination again whether for OSP for uh, for clinical scenarios or for just for short uh, short answer questions write your key answer in here but uh, unfortunately because uh, it's a essay or it's a it's a written, uh, written type of uh, questions uh, blackboard is not going to be able to correct this uh, this question, the, these kind of questions for you, whether for OSP, for OSK, any, for all short answer questions, the blackboard is not going to be able to correct the answers for you. Uh, the, the, the correction is going, going to be done manual, and I think they, wrote, they write it also in here that short answer questions require students to enter the answer into the text box, but also uh, if you go to a say type of questions, it, it's going to tell you that basically whether a say or short answer, uh, Blackboard is not going to be able to correct the answers for you or it's not going to give any grades. You have to enter uh, and show uh, see the, the, the answer for each student and correct it manually. So from here, I'm going to click Submit. Again, I can visualize now the, uh, the, the question that I entered. So it's going to look like this, the picture, the image the question and my key answer. OK, so I can enter multiple questions here. And again, we're still working in the pool. This is if you want to create uh, different questions for different. Uh, different uh, titles or different sessions, OK, or different lectures. And then later on, later on from the test, as we did yesterday. You can choose from the, these different pools uh, the test material, OK? But if you have your test material ready, like you don't want to create pools, uh, like what you did yesterday, and this is also an example, how do you create an items in, in the pool? Basically, you can create the test directly by going to test surveys and pools. Go to test directly. So from here, I can cre create my test directly. Uh, for the short answer uh, examinations, OK? I don't need, need to create the pool. Uh, unless if I want to, as I mentioned, to create different pools for different sessions or from different lectures, then select from each of one of those lectures a uh, certain number of questions uh, similar to what we did yesterday for the black uh, for the MC MCQ exam. OK, so from here I'm going to go. So we went to test now among the test surveys and pools. We chose test and I'm going to directly build my test. OK, I'm going to give it a name. For example, if uh, I can call it short answer 
questions. Final exam, for example. It's up to you here. You can write a description for this uh, for this uh, exam or instructions to the students. You can include description or instructions to the students in these boxes, but it's optional. I usually don't use this this part. OK, I just uh, the, the mandatory part, which is uh, indicated by this astronaut mark uh, is to give a title to the to the test. So now I have created the test, OK, and this is the screen of my test. Now I can create, I can start entering the questions. And you can actually, by the way, uh, create different kind of exam questions within the same test. Like I call this one short answer question because I'm going to create a short answer uh, exam, OK, uh, which is this one. Uh, but basically, if you want to create just an exam and add multiple, multiple assessment uh, tools, uh, for example, matching, uh, multiple answers, multiple choice, uh, MC, which is MCQs, uh, fill in the blank. Uh, you can uh, you can choose multiple questions or you can create multiple questions within the same test. OK, true and false. But for today's purpose and for today's session, we're going to focus on creating a short answer. So this is the page for the short answer. OK, so uh, again, the title is optional for the question. I don't usually enter titles for different questions. And this is the box for the for the question. I can minimize it again. So you can make it bigger or smaller from here. And here now you can uh, start entering your question. OK, so for example, what is the mode of transmission of certain pathogen. OK. So you can write whatever, for example, for microbiology, what's the mode of transmission of Staphylococcus aureus or for uh, the parasitology course, like for uh, any of the pathogens among the parasites. So this is here. Basically, you can write your question, the text. You can write it, OK? Uh, and here, if you write it yourself, as I mentioned again, I keep mentioning this because this is very important. If you write it yourself, you don't need to change anything in here, unless if you want to change the text, make it bigger, smaller, it's up to you. If you want to add uh, tables, you can add, add, add tables from here. But again, basically, if you copy and pasted something from the Internet, and uh, you, sh you should remove the formatting. And this is the same thing even for the options. Like, for example, for my parasitology uh, 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 course, I copy and paste the, the questions and for the MCQ exam, even the options. So from each one of the options, I removed the source formatting. That's for the MCQ examination. OK, here actually for the short answer examination, you need to remove the, the, the formatting uh, just from the question because the students actually they're not going to see this part. This is the answer text part, which is going to be for you to enter the, the answer key. But the students, they're not going to be able to see this part. OK. But in the MCQ, you need to remove the text formatting from the question and from the options if you copy and pasted uh, the text from any source, from Word document or from the Internet or and so on. OK, so again, this is the, my question. I started writing the question. If I just want to keep it as a short answer, uh, short answer questions format exam. So I'm going to just enter a question and that my answer key to that question. If I want to make it an OSP exam, uh, I can, as, as I mentioned, I can add images to these questions. And even actually to the short question uh, answer formats, if you want to add like a supporting image uh, or document for the, for, the, for the student, you can do that. Uh, and by the way, even for cases, for people who are utilizing cases uh, or case scenarios, they can either write the scenario and add, and add an image for the scenario, uh, or they can also add a video. Actually, like this option here, as you can see, you can insert a video, or you can insert a link to the video. Uh, okay. 
basically for any, any any link you can just copy and paste the link directly into the question okay using control a and uh, control c for copy and control v for pasting material uh, you can copy any link if you want the student to click on that link and which take him to a certain video or an image or, or a file and so on but here you can also insert the the, the video into into the question or insert the picture as i showed you earlier or you can insert a file like for example uh, for people who are having problems with uh, inserting images directly we said that the recommendation for edutech is to keep the images uh, 400 by 300 pixels but also another option is that you can put those images in a pdf file for example and from here you can actually browse your computer and insert that pdf file right into the question so this is a, another alternative option is that if you instead of inserting images directly uh, you can insert pdf files uh, files and as i mentioned you can insert videos for clinical scenarios if you want to like show them a clinical scenario scenario and then they answer questions about that video uh, or even a youtube video that you can also uh, put a uh, link a youtube video from here as well so there are multiple options tables for people who wants to put like uh, for example uh, in the lab if you want to put uh, lab results okay or even for other specialties uh, if you want to put like uh, different diagnostic tests and insert uh, those tests in a table here you can choose how many columns how many ro rows it should be that uh, should be uh, in that table so you can choose it from here the the width the alignment the, and so on so my different options but basically i'm just going to insert this table so as you can see now i have inserted a table into that question and you can now start writing uh whatever you want here in this table for example lab lab tests and so on and again your answer key is should be included here so this is going to be the answer Uh, this is a little bit more advanced, which is you can add a rubric if you, uh, but at this time, I think because uh, in the crisis that we're having, we, we're not going to have time to create uh, uh, rubrics to our different assignments or for, to, for our different uh, quizzes or exams, sorry. And, uh, but if you have a rubric that is ready, uh, that what you expect the student to answer uh, in these short answers, you can, if you have a rubric ready, you can insert your rubric here. OK, and these just for uh, classifying the question. It is a microbiology question or uh, you can classify it by categories or topics or by difficulty and keywords. So if you want to call, recall this question again from the bank or from different exams, you can recall it using these uh, keywords. OK, so this is again, it's not, it's not something I usually use. But to keep it simple, for, for the final exam, you're going to write your question here. If you copy and paste text, just remove the text formatting. And then you're going to write your answer key and you're going to click submit. If I click submit and create another question, it's going to create a second question for me. If I click submit, it's going to finish uh, creating the, the, the assessment material or the questions for that exam. OK, so let's say that this is question number two going to write the question text in here. And this is my key answer number two. Number two. And again, as I mentioned, you can specify how many rows you can allow the students to uh, to enter the like how many rows in the, in the box is going to be visible for the students to enter the answer. So if I click now submit, now this exam has two different questions, okay? So I, I, as I mentioned, I went uh, from test pools and surveys, uh, which is at the course tools here. I chose, uh, first we chose the pools just to show you how you can create pools of questions and then you can recall these questions from the pools. And I've shown you how to recall questions from different pools yesterday in the MCQ exam. So I'm not going to repeat it again today. And yesterday's session and today's session and even Sunday's session is going all, all of them are going to be recorded and shared with everyone, inshallah. Uh, but you can create questions in the pools and you can uh, 
recall those questions from the polls, or you can create the test material directly if you have the test ready. Uh, this is the, 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 the test that we just created, short answer question final exam. And as you, can, as you can see here, this exam was not deployed yet. Okay, it says here, no. It means I did not utilize this exam yet with the students, that we did not actually conduct this exam. If you wanna edit the exam material, you click in this small arrow and you go to edit, okay? And here again, I can edit each one of the, those questions. I can go here, click on this material, I can show the show the details how the how the question is going to look like. OK. Uh, I can. Copy and paste this uh, question. I can delete it. I can edit it. OK. And the same thing for the second question here. And as I mentioned yesterday, you can also uh, select all questions and give points to these questions. So I'm going to give, for example, one point for each question or actually you put the points here. You can choose the point for each question. And at the top here, if you select all questions, you can only choose, for example, one point and you update the points. So it's going to update the points for all questions. So now the, the points for these questions, question one and two, it's up the updated to one points. OK. Uh, so this is about, again, the creation of the exam. Uh, quickly, I'm going to talk about the deployment, which we already covered yesterday, but I'm going to just uh, uh, cover it quickly today because we talked about it for the MCQ. It's the same option and we're going to talk about how you can show or hide the, the exam uh, scores in the grading center and how can you actually monitor your students. And there's going to be a whole uh, training session about just grading center and releasing of results and calculating results in grading center uh, on Sunday, inshallah. Uh, we might also cover statistical analysis as well, if you want to perform statistical analysis in the grading center. But now, so I created this test, which we call it uh, short answer question final examination or final exam. I'm going to now deploy this test. From here, as I mentioned yesterday, for the final exam, uh, for example, if you want to uh, you can hide all of those uh, options in the final examination. You can hide all of those options in the final examination uh, in order for the students not to see these informations during the final exam. OK, and the way that that you can hide these uh, items is just by clicking here on the right side and you say hide link. So this now the home page that was hidden. Uh, for example, if I want to hide uh, also the learning material, I can hide everything that's in, in these uh, uh, in these icons. OK. So now I'm going to show it again for, for the students because the course is not finished yet, but during the final exam, I can hide all of those and I can add here a new icon. I, I can call it content area icon. OK, and call it, for example, final exam. And I can choose if I click this one, it's going to this icon is going to be available to the users. So now the final this the final exam is going to be available to the students you can bring it here to the top. You just basically grab the icon and you can move it to the top and the bottom. If I click on the final exam and I choose the test. So for the for the you have to choose the icon that you want to the, the, the test to be uh, presented at or like to, to be deployed for the student at. Like if I want to be the final exam to be present here in this icon for the final exam, I have to go here, then go to the assessment test. And now I'm going to go to the exam that I've created, the short answer exam. Short answer question, final examination. OK, this I, this box here is only sh showing me the, the assessment uh, or the exams that was not conducted. OK, for the students. For the exams or for the quizzes that I've already conducted, it's not going to appear here, but you can make it available again if, if you want. Like if you have an exam that was conducted and you want to ma make it available again, you can. There is a way to do that, but uh, and you can also create a new test from here. But for now, I'm going to show you how to deploy this 
test that we just created for the short answer question final exam. Okay, so the deployment option is just similar to what we mentioned yesterday, so I'm not going to spend too much time here. You can add a description for the exam and make uh, this description uh, available to the so You can add a description basically here for the students or inst instructions. Uh, I recommend that to make the test appear in a new window. Uh, you recommend that, uh, of course, you have to make this test available to the students, otherwise they're not going to see it. Uh, you can also add an announcement for the test. Okay, and by default, uh, the student is going to be allowed to submit this test one time. If I if I activate if I click on this one, uh, it means I'm going to allow the students to submit the exam over and over again uh, to do it multiple times uh, and actually unlimited times here. And for this one, you can also select the number of attempts. But this is not we're not going to use this for exams and we're not going to use it, especially for final exams, for example. You want to keep this turned off because you're going to allow the students to conduct the exam only once. Okay. Uh, force completion, of course, is very important again because uh, you want the student to finish the test in one uh, in one seating. Okay, so once he starts the, the, the exam, he has to finish the test. Okay, unless if you are doing an open book examination, and you are uh, in this case, I, 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 I highly suggest that you don't click the forced completion. If you don't, if you want the student to, uh, I'm going to show you the settings to do uh, for, for open book examination. But for now, for timed exam and one seating exam, we're going to uh, click the forced completion. We're going to set a timer, OK, for example, one hour. And again, an another very important information to click is auto submit. Because if you did not click auto submit, if you did not choose on uh, the student, you're going to have to wait for the student to submit his exam. OK, uh, but if you click on once the timer is finished, then the exam is going to be auto submitted by itself. It's very important to choose or to make auto submit on on. OK, as I mentioned, force completion is very important. Allowing the making the test available to the student is very important. This is also a very important information because if I did not choose the date and the time for the exam and I click submit, uh, it's going to present or the, the exam is going to be visible to the students uh, right away. But if I if I have an exam scheduled, for example, after one or two weeks, I'm going to enter the date for that uh, for that exam. OK, and they're going to choose what time this exam is going to be conducted. So this is for scheduling the exam. For example, I want the student to take it as uh, at 2 p.m. OK, so again, this is a very important thing to do. And in addition to setting the timer, uh, actually for this part, uh, the display until is this is where you uh, how long you're going to allow the student to enter the exam. Like, for example, when the school was running normally, we used to allow the students to enter the exams for half the period of the exam, like for 30 minutes, he's allowed to enter uh, the the class and do the, his examination. Otherwise, he's going to be prohibited from taking his exam without valid justification. That 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 was in physically uh, physical exams when the students uh, used to come to the to the college and to the university. But for now, for online examination, maybe the recommendation is to give the students, for example, 10 minutes or maximum 15 minutes to enter the exam. So I'm going to choose the same date here, 22 April. OK. And I'm going to allow the students to enter the exam for 15 minutes. So that's the time is going to that's going to be allowed for the students to enter the exam. As I mentioned, the password, I mentioned it yesterday that you can use password for makeup examination. For example, if you have two or three or five students did the, they did not attend the exam and they have a valid justification and you want to do a makeup examination for them, then you can do the same settings, but then you choose you uh, create a password, for example, for that test and share it with only these five students, for example, uh, and therefore only those five students with the password, they can enter the exam and their colleagues, they cannot enter the exam because they don't have the password. So this is something we can utilize for makeup examination. 
test availability exceptions. I explained this yesterday. If you have a student who is late or he got disconnected or kicked out from the system, you can add this user manually, these uh, who have valid justification. And here you can, uh, again, the force completion is clicked by, uh, by default. The, the time here that I chose uh, is also by default. The availability is also the ones that we adjusted here. We can change it just for these two students. But for example, if I have a student who is late uh, for 10 minutes, I mentioned yesterday that you can uh, give him more time. Okay? You can allow the student to be to, to enter the exam for, uh, for example, 70 minutes. Okay, Or you can keep it as 60 minutes, but basically you can change the availability for him because he came, for example, after 15 minutes, he came 2 and 20 minutes. And this is very important to notice that to put it in PM or AM, I chose AM by mistake. That can ruin your exam. So basically PM, okay. If the student came by 2 and 20 PM uh, and you want to allow the student to enter, you can allow, give him the same time, 60 minutes, and then just change the time for him. So it's, I chose before 22 April. And I chose 2 p.m. I'm, I'm going to allow that student specifically to enter even after, for example, uh, 2.25 p.m., for example, OK? So that's when the exam is going to be, uh, or you can actually enter the current time. So the current time, the student, when he came, it was 2.20. Uh, OK, and I wanted this. I want this test to be and present to him until. I'm going to give him like, for example, maybe five minutes. To enter the exam, so 220 because the student he is now trying to connect again at 220 and I'm going to give him five minutes to connect again. And once he connect now, He's going to have six, 60 minutes, just like his colleagues. This is in case he have a valid justification. If he did not have a valid justification and he came in late, and you do want to give him the same amount of time uh, uh, as his colleagues, you can shorten this timer and make it 50 minutes, OK? Because the student, he came late 10 minutes. He missed uh, the time allowed for entering the exam, but we made an exception for him to enter the exam, but with shorter period of time, which is 50 minutes, OK? And these exceptions can be removed by clicking this X mark. The due date, again, I don't recommend using this. Um, even if you would want to do an open book, again, I'm going to show you how to do an open book exam, what settings to use. So, but I do, the, according to EduTech, they don't recommend using due date. This option, leave it as it is uh, on default. Uh, at me, this is the meaning that it's the, the results of the exam is going to be present in the grading center. But as I mentioned, for short answer questions, the, the items uh, need to be graded manually. OK, you're going to have to do the, the grading manually for short answer examination. But at least the, the column is going to appear in the grading center. And from there, you're going to do a go and do the grading for the exam here. Uh, even if I keep it, keep it clicked or not, here the, the MCQ examination is basically these icons or these options going to allow the students to see his final results. Uh, this is what the student is doing MCQs or uh, or matching the, the the exams that can be corrected through Blackboard. But here, because the exam is not correct, corrected by Blackboard for short answers, so it doesn't matter what you click here, because either way, the students is not going to see any scores after he submit his examination, OK? For short answer. Here it depends on the settings or the, of the settings of the exam that you want to do. If you want the exam, the students to do the short question, questions for one hour in one seating, uh, and as I mentioned, uh, with, with force completion, uh, you can dis uh, make the system display one question at a, at a time, and you can prohibit backtracking to minimize uh, sheeting in, in exams, OK? So the student, once he go to the next question, he cannot go back to the previous question. And again, 
the recommendation is to randomize questions between students so that each student is going to have a different set or, uh, or the, the arrangement of the question is going to be different for each student. This is if you want to conduct a short answer examination that is in one seating, uh, like for example, uh, the plan right now, there is a discussion that the student, he conduct an MCQ examination, and after the MCQs, he conduct a short answer examination. This probably the recommended settings to use, utilize for this kind of exam, okay? But if you wanna conduct, like for example, uh, open exam, uh, just briefly, again, uh, open book examination, you can again, uh, Keep this option, open the test is in a new window, that the, the test is gonna open a new window for the student. Make the test available, yes. Uh, choose and uh, make an announcement, yes. But here, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna remove force completion. I'm gonna remove the timer, okay? And I'm gonna may, may display the test. For example, I wanna give the students six hours to conduct this exam. And I want them to conduct the exam from 2 p.m. until 8 p.m. So I'm going to display it after. So after 8 p.m., the student is not going to be able. To, the, 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 the icon for this exam is is not going to be uh, present in Blackboard anymore. So the icon or the link to the exam is not going to be present after this date uh, and after this date and time. OK, so this is my recommendation for the open book examination. Uh, we might hear from other people who have uh, if you have a better experience with doing a, a open book examination with students. OK. Again, it's up to you if you want to do a password, if you, if you are making makeup exam for these students. Due date is not recommended. Leave this as it is. Uh, again, since uh, it's, a, it's a short answer, it's going to be manually corrected that the, the grades is not going to show to the students anyway. Uh, here, I would recommend that all for open book examination, you can leave all questions to appear at the same time. So all of the questions is going to appear on one screen for the student. OK, and uh, again, because it's, it's an open, open book, I'm not going to randomize this qu the questions. I, this is my, 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 my idea about conducting an open book examination for uh, the students. OK, but again, we're going to go back to the short answer just to show you how it's going to appear. In the blackboard. Let's move this back to. For example, I'm going to give the students, for example, 15 minutes. OK, so this is for short answer and one seating examination uh, that we just created, which is uh, the short answer question final exam that we created. I'm going to click submit. OK, so as you can see in this final exam icon, I've created this exam short answer question for final exam. And the availability of this test is going to be hidden until the date and the time that is specified for this test. Again, if you want to, I mentioned this for MCQ examination yesterday, and the same thing is true here, is if you want to change the exam itself, you can click on this small arrow for editing the text, the, the test, or you can click on this option for also uh, adjusting the test, uh, for changing the test options, okay? The time, the duration, uh, the date and uh, uh, randomizing a question and, and so on. All of these, the, the options that I, ju I just showed, uh, you can change it from here. Okay. After this exam is done, by the way, you can just click on this one and you can do item analysis if you want to do statistical analysis. Okay. So now we've created this test. For me as an instructor, as, as I mentioned yesterday for the MCQ exam, the same thing is true here for the short answer. For me as an instructor, I can access this exam and conduct it as many times as I want, okay, because uh, to see how the exam is going to look like for the students. If I inserted images in the OSPI exam, for example, uh, I want to see how those, those images are going to be displayed and the questions as well. Uh, I can click on this uh, and start answering the exam as many times as I want. So we can try doing this. This is the screen that's going to show to the students. The exam is going to open in a new screen as we uh, as the options that we selected. OK, I'm going to click begin. 
the students they're gonna have if, I, if it is a timed exam okay the students they're gonna have a timer appearing in here okay in addition to the other test information but they're gonna have a timer appear here on the top but for me now as an instructor i'm just viewing uh, the the test that i've created okay and how does it look like so this is the first question that we created for the students what is the mode of transmission of such and such pathogen okay uh, as if, if you remember that we included here also a, a table okay but i didn't write anything in that table so nothing is this is why we have nothing in here because i didn't include anything in the table but uh, if you include the table if you write anything in the table it's going to appear here if you have an image and you include uh, the image the image is going to appear in this uh, in the question part okay so you're going to see how the question looks like and this is how the the answer is going to look like for the students okay so the students they're going to start answering the question and then go to the next question so here it says the following question may, may be incomplete because i did not write anything within the box so this is a good thing to have and i believe the same thing is true even for in the mcq examination if the student did not answer an mcq and he wrote uh, he, he he clicked on this arrow to the next next uh it's going to give him this error message that you did not answer this question which is a good thing to have in blackboard to inform the student you did not answer the question but i, uh, I clicked okay uh, the student he can click cancel and uh, cancel and start answering the question so this is how the second question that i entered how is it going to look like okay this is my question number two Okay, and the student, he can submit his answer in here. And then you just click on save and submit. The student is going to click on save and submit. Again, give me the same error message because I didn't write anything in the box. And here it's going to show me uh, the, the information about when I started the exam, when the exam was finished and so on. So again, this is for me as an instructor and because as you can see here, the status is need grading because it's a short answer examination. Uh, the student is not going to be able to see the grade for this exam. OK, so it's going to say it's, uh, needs grading and from the grading center, then you can go and grade this test manually. Uh, probably for the for the sake of time, I'm not going to cover how do we grade short answer or MCQ question, uh, short answer question by, by mainly in the uh, we can cover it in the grading center on Sunday, but uh, just to show you one more thing in the grading center. Basically, now I created this test. And I want to grade it, but I want to hide the results from the from the students as I'm doing the grading. I don't want to show the grade to the students. OK, so I can hear after the students, they answer the question. You're going to have a mark here telling you that there is uh, answers that we are waiting for to, to be graded again we can cover this in the in the grading uh, session on sunday but uh, when you go here and enter the mark or, or correct that those questions for the students uh, the, the the grades is going to appear here if you don't want this the, the students to see the, the grade of this exam the short answer question examination you can go here and hide it from the student okay just click on this small arrow and hide, I can hide and I can show this column to the students. So this covers basically how to create short answer examination. Uh, the deployment uh, option of the test is the same as the deployment op option for, uh, for MCQ exam. Uh, also, uh, how's the, the, as I mentioned, the grading is gonna be manually done for the, such tests. We can show an example on Sunday on how to do the, the grading manually for uh, for short answer examination. And actually we, on Sunday we're going to cover all things related to uh, to the grading center. Do we have any questions from any member from members? Is the link for the session is same or every time you will give a new link? Because uh, today 
I didn't find any link to connect with the sessions. Sorry. Uh, hello, doctor. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? I can, I can hear you, yes. Uh, uh, the links for this particular session, it should be updated every time or it should be the same link we use yesterday. Oh, you mean the, the link for this session, the recording? Uh, yes. Uh, the recording for this session is uh, it's going to be sent in a, in, a, in a different link, actually, because it's a, it's a different different meeting. So I believe it should be present uh, within the within Teams, Microsoft Teams. Uh, like if you scroll the, through the history of the of the chat history of the Teams, you're supposed to see the recording for uh, today's session, uh, as well as for uh, yesterday's session. Uh, but also I'm going to uh, send the, the link to everyone. I'm going to download the video and I'm going to send the link that which is a direct link to this to the to the video as well for today's session. OK, thank you. Okay. Welcome. Uh, Dr. Rami, thank you for the Hello. session. Uh, I have a question. Sure. So, Suppose we have, uh, let's say we have uh, a table and the table has some information and there are some space that students need to fill in in the table. So can we consider this as a short answer while we will do it on Blackboard? If you have a table and you expect from the students to fill, to fill in some space yeah, in the table, it has some information and some information are missing and the student has to fill this information. So. Can this be done on the blackboard? I believe this kind of uh, this kind of uh, question can be done as uh, fill in the blank. Like if I go back to here to the assessments. So if I go back to the sorry to test the base supposed to so to test that we just created. For example, the short answer. If you go to fill in the blanks, you have either one blank, I think this option fill in the blank, which is one blank, or you can have multiple blanks. OK. And this is going to be your uh, where, where you put your question. OK, within that question, uh, I can share a video with you also that explain how do you uh, do this process regarding that. But basically, if you want to do a table, this is going to be my table. OK, uh, what you need to do here, I believe to, that you put between bracket brackets. Just a second, these brackets, if I put a number here. So number one. And number two. This box is going to become bigger when you start writing on it. But basically here you have a text written and you want to fill the student to fill the, the, the box uh, that's in front of this text. Like you have a text in, and you want him to ma manually fill this, this blank in here. This is how you write it basically. You start from number one, number two, and you start filling the numbers uh, the, that you, which is, basically fill in the blanks into that question. What you do then is you go to the next part. So as you can see here now, it created this uh, uh, table for me. Uh, the table actually also can be copied and pasted from uh, from uh, Word. Then it might have the, what do you call it, the, the borders. Here now, if you, if you can see, it removed the borders in the, in the table. So you, you can either uh, try to create it in Blackboard with the with the borders, or you can uh, also create it in Word and then copy and paste the table from Word. Then it's going to have the boxes or the actual borders. Okay, but basically here now I have number one blank number one and blank number two in the table that I created. So here you, you you're going to write your answers that in blank number one in that table the students is supposed to write like for example this answer. OK, answer one. 
I'm going to just call it answer one. And then black number two, uh, in uh, number two uh, of bla blank, you're going to write just answer two. So you're going to write your answers in here. And there's different options in here you can do. It says exact match, that the answer need to be exactly as uh, what I wrote in here. The student he has to write answer number one, answer one, to get his uh, to, for for the for Blackboard to consider this answer correctly. So Blackboard actually can correct uh, fill in the blank automatically if you know uh, if, uh, if you were careful about how do you fill in the these blanks. Like if, uh, for example, you can, if you call it case sensitive, it means I believe even uh, the capital or the small letters is going to make a difference. OK, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make a Blackboard consider this answer correct or wrong. If you say exact match, also it's going to make Blackboard consider uh, this answer to be, uh, it has to be written this way. Uh, but you can say, for example, pattern match. You can say it contains that part of the answer contain, contain this word. OK. Uh, or pattern match and so you have different options here. If you you can look up videos about how do you set up this uh, box about uh, the answers in Blackboard in order that for the Blackboard to correct it for you automatically that as as soon as if the student he answered this question or something close to that answer. OK. For example, if the answer contain part of it, part of the answer contain this, then consider it as a correct answer. OK, so it's up to you what you want to consider as a correct answer in these blanks. OK, you can mani uh, manipulate those options. Uh, OK, so this is I believe this is how you can create fill in the blank within a table in Blackboard. Clear, thank you. OK. So again, here you can also write, if you click next, you can write the correct response, incorrect response. You can give a response to the students, but it's not mandatory uh, since it does not have this ast astronaut mark. So you can just click submit. So now, as you can see, but as I mentioned, if you create this table in Word document and paste it, copy and paste it from Word, you're going to have a table with borders. You can see the, the lines. But here the lines is not visible. But basically, this is how the uh, the question is going to look like. You're going to write some text here, and the answer is going to be number one. The the, the question here, or what's supposed to be filled in this uh, in this second part of the table, is going to be number two. And these are the expected answers with their exact match, contain, uh, and other options you can do here. Uh, and again, I but I recommend for this kind of questions is that you go manually and check the answers of the students because the student he might have answered uh, the question partly correctly or uh, partially cor correct uh, but bl the blackboard consider it as a wrong answer so i recommend that the, for the fill in the blank questions is that you check them manually just to make sure that blackboard actually did a good job and you uh, adjust the settings pro uh, appropriately that Blackboard considered the correct answers correct and the wrong answers wrong. OK. Any more questions? يعطيك العافية دكتور رامي ما قصرت شكرا جزيلا الله يعافيك uh, again this session is going to be recorded and it's going to be sent to everyone uh, and again if you have any questions feel free to, to contact me at any time and uh, thank you so much for uh, for joining today's session uh, regarding uh, creating short answer examination in Blackboard السلام عليكم <تصفيق>